All right, let's get started with lesson two, collision theory. Now, by definition, the collision theory states that reactants must collide to, together successfully in order for a chemical reaction to occur. So what we're trying to say here is that reactant molecules contain kinetic energy. And as those reactant molecules are moving around at uh, pretty high velocities, uh, they're going to collide with each other from time to time. And if those collisions are successful collisions, then a chemical reaction can be initiated and we can begin to form product. But until those collisions occur, no reaction can start. So the idea overall then is that chemical reactions are based on these collisions between the reactant molecules. And when reactants are placed together, the kinetic energy that these particles possess causes them to collide with each other, as I just mentioned. And some of these collisions will break some of the chemical bonds between the reactants. And this results in what is known as a high-energy transition state. All right, And I'm going to highlight that because that is really important to understand that a transition state is created when um, during the course of the reaction in between the reactants and the products and this transition state is when we're starting to form new bonds and we're also breaking old bonds uh, to produce our products from our reactants so we can look at this and let's draw kind of a, a picture of what this might entail. So let's say we have a reactant A and it's going to react with another molecule here we'll call B and B is made up of element B and C. And so A and B are going to be set on a collision course. They're going to collide with each other. And if they collide with each other successfully then we're going to create what is known as that high energy transition state and that high energy transition state might look something like this where you have A and then B and C where A and B are starting to form a bond and C we're starting to break that bond between the B and the C and this then should result in our new products and the new products should contain element A bonded now to element B and C is going to be off on its own so A and B kind of go their way and C kind of goes its way okay so in general we can say these are the reactants and they must collide together and those collisions must be successful and then we create this transition state here the transition state in between and then finally we have our products All right, so that's kind of the course direction of a chemical reaction now, as we've mentioned many times, collisions have to be successful. So what do we mean by this? Well, not all collisions that occur are going to be successful. There are two main factors that influence if a collision is going to be successful or not. One is called the energy of collision, which is also known as the activation energy, which just simply means that reactant molecules must collide with the appropriate amount of energy to create what we know as the high energy transition state. Also, the reactants must collide with the right geometrical orientation which is known as the geometry of collision. Now we're going to spend more time talking about these two in more detail in just a minute. So overall then the rate of a chemical reaction is really going to depend on the number of collisions between particles that are really successful. Now to give you kind of perspective to appreciate this, only a small fraction of collisions actually lead to a reaction, about 1 in 10 of the 13 collisions. So that's not a whole lot. But the reactants are moving quite fast, so there's typically going to be quite a number of collisions um, in a very short amount of time.
So we can kind of relook at our rate of reaction as really the number of successful collisions that occurs per time. And the more successful the collisions are, and the more frequent the collisions will be, then the faster the reaction will occur. All right, so now let's dive into activation energy, one of the most important principles when it comes to kinetics and understanding success, successful collisions. So by definition, um, the activation energy, which is symbolized by E subscript A, is the minimum, the minimum value of kinetic energy which a particle must have before a reaction is able to occur. So when the reactant molecules collide, if they don't have enough activation energy to initiate a transition state, then no reaction is going to occur even though there's a collision that's, that's happened here. We can kind of look at it as, as an idea of this uh, picture here where you have this guy who's trying to push a boulder um, up a big hill and then roll it down to um, point um, B. So in other words, the guy starting with the boulder at point A and wants to get it down to point B, that's its objective. But it has to get up over this hump, you could say, and we're going to call this our transition state. So in order for this guy to get the boulder down from A to B, it's got to get to that transition state. And so it's got to add an additional amount of energy. And we can look at this. This is the amount of energy. And this would be known in a chemical reaction is the activation energy. And so it's going to push that boulder up to that transition point and apply the appropriate amount of energy to get there. And then it's going to let it go. And as it lets it go and rolls down the mountain, the boulder is going to lose potential energy. So if you remember back to thermodynamics, um, when the boulder is at position A, at this high position, it has a lot more potential energy than it would at the bottom of the mountain or bottom of the hill here, which should have lower potential energy. So you could actually say that there's going to be a change in potential energy here um, as we go from the position A to position B and since we are losing potential energy we have a negative delta H but we still need to get that boulder up to the transition state in the first place and so we have to apply some initial energy to get there and that is the activation energy. So we can draw a real energy diagram for this very um, situation that you would have to, to be able to draw yourself. Um, and so let's do it in terms of an endothermic process here where we're going to gain energy to create more potential energy for the products. So we nip typically are going to see something that will look like this. So we have our reactants down here. Our products are going to be made here. And we know that the difference between the energy difference between the reactants and the products is the change in entropy or enthalpy, sorry, which in this case is going to be positive. So the system actually had to absorb energy from the surroundings and that was created your use to create a higher potential energy state for the products. However, in order to get to the products, again, we had to make that transition state. that we see here, transition state, which is, which is very high in energy. To create that transition state requires uh, a good uh, uh, amount of energy. And that's going to be represented by this change in energy here, which is really our activation energy to get us to that transition state in the first place. All right. So really what we're f looking at here is two types of energy states. One is the activation energy in order to make the transition state, and that applies to the kinetics, how fast the reaction occurs. And the other energy we're looking at is the change in potential energy or the change in um, enthalpy, which is really dealing with the thermodynamic quantities here. So we need to understand them both and how they're related to each other.
All right, so let's go to um, an exothermic. Now, typically in an exothermic reaction, the products are going to be a lot lower in potential energy than the reactants. So we should see something like this, where we start out with the reactants, we create the products, there is a drop in potential energy, so the delta H is negative, it's exothermic, energy is lost by the system as heat, but we still have a bump in the road in this where we have to create a transition state no matter what. So again, our transition state and that's going to be represented by the amount of activation energy that we have to go. Now if you notice, do a comparison here between an endo and an exothermic reaction, it usually creates or, or needed less activation energy for an exothermic than for a um, endothermic processes. And so normally exothermic processes are not just thermodynamic favorable, but they're also typically faster because it requires less activation energy than it does for an endothermic reaction to occur. Okay, So there's our two energy diagrams that uh, you should be able to draw for the quiz, for the test, either AP or IB exam. So um, get familiar with them. All right, so let's go back to looking at um, this a, l a little bit more of a, a, a summary of the activation energy. So only particles that have a kinetic energy value greater than the activation energy will have successful collisions. And you got to note that particles with lower values of kinetic energy may still collide with each other, but these collisions will not lead to a reaction because they simply just don't have enough activation energy to get the, the reaction going. We can represent this by a Maxwell-Boltzmann's distribution curve, um, which again, you should be familiar with. So if I was to draw um, a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve here in the, in the graph, and you can put that into your notes as well, we get something along the lines of this occurring. Actually, let me redraw that a little bit so it's there we go alright so what we're basically uh, saying is that this represents the total number of particles um, in some kind of system at some temperature we'll just say temperature A alright and of course we have our average kinetic energy Right here, this is the average kinetic that we've talked about so many times. Now, I'm going to draw a line here, and I'm going to shade in this portion of molecules. And so, what, what we understand by the shading is this right here represents the minimal kinetic energy in order to initiate a chemical reaction. So the, fr the, the molecules above that point have enough energy in order to react. All right. In other words, this is the activation of energy point. Any molecule above this line, this magic line here, this energy of activation, has enough energy that when it collides, is going to form a chemical reaction or a transition state. Any molecules below this line, they don't have enough energy when they collide to form a transition state. So these particles in this area simply can collide with each other, but they're never going to create success successful collisions. They just don't have enough energy to form a transition state at all. So you should be familiar with this setup of a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve and be able to use a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve to explain activation energy. And understand that there's only going to be a very small percentage of molecules in a system that will have enough energy to initiate a reaction when the collisions occur. 
Okay, so that's simply activation energy. So let's turn our attention to now geometry of collisions, orientations um, that molecules have to be in. So collisions between particles are random. And because of this, not all collisions between the particles will result in a chemical reaction. The particles must collide with each other in the right orientation, the right geometrical um, spot uh, for the reaction to occur. Now, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this particular concept of the geometry of collisions, but just enough that, to understand that, that this is a, an important concept when it, we look at the kinetics of a reaction and how fast the reaction goes is that the easier for them to collide in the right location the faster the reaction will occur. So let's kind of draw a picture here of this. Let's say we have two reactants here. I'm just going to use blue to represent we, um, the reactants and um, let's change another one here like so. Okay, now these guys are going to collide with each other and they're going to collide in such a way that they're going to form a, tra uh, a possible transition state that looks like this. Okay, I'm just going to kind of draw a fast little picture here like so. Okay, so this is our transition state. So apparently they have enough energy to create a transition state. However, because of their collisions that just occurred, they are not going to result in a successful geometrical collision. And so there will be no reaction that will actually occur. So we're just going to end up back with our original reactants again. Um, like so. All right, so no reaction will occur here. These are going to be ineffective collisions. All right, they're just not going to collide. All right, so now let's look at something where when they collide, they're going to collide, collide with the correct ge geometry, and we're actually going to form a chemical reaction. So let's go back to our original state here. So here's our reactants. We're drawing them. Here's our other reactants. Now they're going to collide, but this time they're going to cl collide in such a geometrical arrangement that is actually favorable, like this, where now this results in an actual reaction in products. Okay, so I'm just going to draw this there and there. So we form our new products here. And so this is going to be successful collisions based on the collision geometry, the location where they actually collide at. Okay. So again, what I'm saying here is that in order for a reaction to occur, reactant molecules must collide and they must collide successfully. Well, what does that mean successfully? One is they must collide with enough activation energy in order to create a high energy transition state. And two, they must collide at the correct location between the reactant molecules, the right geometry, the right angle, the right orientation in order for a reaction to actually occur. All right, so that's this lesson in a nutshell. Um, that's all I have for this lesson. Review your notes very carefully and prepare for a quiz that we're going to have over this material. So that is it for now.